it's G from Made in Murray. I'm here with David Robertson. Now, how in this present crisis should we react to some businesses and services being classed as non-essential? Because me personally, I look out at the business market and I see, to me, all businesses seem to be essential. What's happening? I, I think that's, well, that's a very difficult question. In terms of essential, the, the, it's, it's near about the businesses. It's about the people going on to the high street or going to the places where these businesses are. So I don't think that you can actually say that this business is better than this or we need this more than that or whatever. It's really a way of defining businesses to stop huge amounts of people going to certain places. So at the minute, it's quite clear. The categories are quite clear. If we didn't have the news agents part, we wouldn't be able to be open. And we have decided not to open up the full part of that business or not doing the takeaway food, which we could do, or the bacon, which we could do, or just keeping it to a very tight, very succinct thing so that people know exactly what we're open for. It's a service provider. It's keeping the community linked with our news, with our magazines, with our core products. Um, and I don't think it's about saying that you're essential and you're non-essential. I think it's about minimising the amount of places that are open to minimise the amount of people that are going. And I think that is really fits the crux of, of the government's thinking behind it. Um, and I think in a lot of senses, what they've done is, is the correct thing. And they, they have kept the key things open, if you like, and there are things, and most business owners have been very responsible and have said, well, actually, no, if we were to open, we could maybe open, we could. And you saw that with the reaction to, for example, some of the sports shops trying to classify themselves as bike stores to be open, and then there was that public <laughs> backlash against it. You've got to look at it and you've got to say, I could be open from nine o'clock to five o'clock, and there would be always somebody coming in because that's just the nature of that business. There would always be somebody coming in. We've gone to a very structured opening. We're doing our core thing, which is delivering the newspapers, and we're open for a short, specific period of time where people know they can come and interact. Two people in the shop at a time, a queue outside if need be, which happens on occasion, and we then close and people know that's it. We're not trying to trade as normally. We're trying just to provide the core services that we have. And again, I think it's, it's the majority of businesses have been very respectful of that. And if you look at the businesses that have tried to adapt and change, so for example, businesses that never delivered food and are now delivering food, they've got to do that enough to make it worthwhile, taking staff off a of furlough, covering the delivery cost, covering the extra cost. They've got to at least break even or do something, whether it's keeping their business relevant, whether they feel it's just something they've got to do personally. And, and that's what I find quite interesting because some of these businesses shut completely and have now reopened partially and they will all have their own individual reasons for that. And it'll be interesting to see how that develops as the restrictions are lifted. And that's what worries me about saying, well, Garden centres can open. Well, they can't open their coffee shops because you wouldn't be able to open that part to it. Is everybody going to suddenly flock to garden centres like they did with B&Q? They might, they might not. And if they're organised enough for it, then it's fine. But it may be better to ease more businesses at a time so that people have other options to go to. But what we did not want is just everything being open again in one go and then suddenly all the roads get flooded, everything gets happened. It's that gradual introduction again. I think it's I think it's a very, very difficult question, but I didn't feel one business is essential and one business is not. I feel that they just made a decision to lessen the amount of people. Yeah, that's a great answer. I think it's really down to using an unfortunate term <laughs> to describe a difficult situation. It's like yeah. using the word hardship fund. I, I'm I'm very anti hardship. I'm very anti labels actually. And I didn't like that hardship fund. Hardship fund implies, you know, would you say I am under hardship? 
Well, I would say I'm not. I'm very lucky. I've, I've a lovely house. I've got a nice lifestyle. I work hard and other nice. But technically, I could apply for that fund. But would I feel right applying for it with that name? If, if it is it a there's another fund called the Resilient Fund. I'm quite quite okay with that. But hardship to me implies it's for the people that are really really struggling that have got nowhere else to go. And even then, I didn't like that fund. It can. I think it should be that it should be. I had this discussion with Sarah Maycraft and she, she agreed with me that it will put people off applying for it because of the terminology around it, the, the stigma, if you like, around that word. Because nobody that I know said, oh, well, we're going to be in hardship because of this. It's circumstantial. Nobody predicted this. Nobody, nobody well, they did, but they, nobody really planned for it happening, actually physically happening, there was all these scenarios if there was a pandemic, you know, in 2016, Bill Gates said X and Bill Gates said Y and, and, and maybe they did, but I didn't think anybody thought that the entire world could be brought to a standstill. I just didn't think anybody thought that. And uh, I think people thought there might be degrees of that. People think that there might be countries might have struggled with certain things, and I think everybody thought it would be mere airborne things like Ebola and, and things like that, that would really be the scary, the real scary ones, if you can what I mean. But um, no, I, I, find it, I find it interesting, the, the whole kind of idea behind that. It's, it's, it's great for